the idea is to uh, try to cover, or at least to enter, the third subject we wanted to talk about, which is how to select ideas, meaning uh, to make sure we work with the proper idea instead of working with an idea that will uh, end with a dead end. Um, which is then very close to this other subject, which is how do we enrich an idea also? How do we combine ideas? Because selecting means also, oh, idea number seven and idea number 12, maybe if I put them together, yeah. I generate something which is very rich. How to smell that between one trigger and the other, one, one parameter and the other, a mix is going to be interesting. It seems that you have, it's, it's good if you have a good, a strong contradiction somewhere. So something that enter into contradiction, the contradiction can be between the character, the contradiction can be between the character and the context, the contradiction can be between character inside the context. You, you have to find something because you will explore this contradiction as, uh, as much as possible. What we uh, see most of the time in the feature film writing is that in the middle, in the middle there is something that is dropping, that is, that is falling apart because at the beginning there was not enough trigger or contradiction or paradox that was... Uh, Electricity. Uh, yeah, that was, that was here. Another thing is that I think it's in, it's, it can be interesting to talk about values uh, because sometimes you want to explore a battle of values. I'm not talking about theme because theme is some is some sometimes something very mysterious and abstract. But values, so it's the values you want to criticize, the values that you want to pay tribute to, the values that you want to question. And values is a good uh, way to motivate writers to find uh, an engine in their in their in their. Uh, the writing and thing. And also there is character, of course. If you want to do a portrait, you have to build someone who is... Sorry, what, can you elucidate more values? And, and values, yeah. Your values, for example, uh, what are the values as a human being that you are interested into? Mm. Or maybe you okay, defend some values. Author, the, your values yes, as the author. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Or you, there is a value that you want to not attack, but you want to, in a way, destroy. You want to, you, you want to build a criticism of, of, of values that is inside the society growing. For example, I, I don't know the importance of self-image or something like that, that you want to attack this. So it's, it's, it could be a good way to know a little bit if your idea is linked to a value or not. Because an idea that doesn't carry any value uh, how can it make a story that brings, that have something to say for 90 minutes? That would be my first idea about this. Maybe I have a question about that. Uh, does the selection of ideas has to be a conceptual process in, in a way you have yes, described? Yes, that's an question. Yeah. Or can it be an experimental process? Could it be a random process like we have Both. said before? Mm -hmm. Or even though more, more uh, different kind of, of things, for example, uh, you, I don't know, you associate an idea, well, your ideas with different kind of music and compare the music, but not the ideas, associate them to different kind of dishes or exactly. different kind of places yeah. you'd like to be or... It's interesting you talk about uh, dishes because I, I was about to say it's, 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 it's linked to cooking in a way, you know? It's, it's putting ingredients together to see how it tastes, you know? So you combine, sometimes it just doesn't work, so the, which is why it's experimental. There's, no, it's not, there's nothing systematic. What can be systematic is the possibility of uh, putting together two uh, initial ideas in order to try to see what it generates. And, and you go from idea one to idea 20, and, and, and you, you put them together, you try all, most combinations, until the moment you're like, oh my God, this, I, I, I couldn't have uh, forecast that effect myself alone if I didn't have put together these two. This is funny, uh, Antoine, this is uh, exactly the beginning of uh, Ratatouille, where you have uh, rats <laughs> living in garbage, and he takes two very good ingredients he's found somewhere. He stole, there's 
um, a piece of, I think it's a raisin or something like that. And uh, the other thing is a cheese. And both ingredients are good alone, but when you combine them and he combines them, he cooks in his, just eating together, you know? He cooks it inside and suddenly you have uh, uh, new colors, you know, or like an explosion of flavors. And so the new idea um, is interesting because it's not uh, I first idea plus second one, but it makes something completely different. Like in cooking, if you cook something, you melt things together and you cannot get the ingredients, uh, you, you can't separate them anymore. You have a cake or you have something really new. And uh, this is very important to say it. When you take two uh, different things, I, I was talking about genres. I don't know if you take a genre like a romantic comedy and a, I don't know, a, a epic or thriller, you mix them and it's, not, it's gonna be a new form, a new shape, and really new, something uh, with a new flavor. So you don't have to be afraid of using something people already know, because uh, two familiar things together make something really new. I really like this, this idea. I've, I've been doing wine tasting for a long time, and uh, we were, one of the goal was also to associate different kind of wine with different kind of dishes. And when I met my girlfriend, Ruby, uh, she had the idea, but very naturally, to associate wines to concepts, colors, feelings, and it was very creative because she decided in some way to uh, stop the traditional association of wine with dishes, but to associate them with something else. And the creativity just came because of, of this idea of doing, the, of doing so. Yeah, a writer like uh, Bukowski would agree with you. You have to use some wine to find <laughs> new ideas. <laughs> maybe this goes like anti kind of the whole point of this exercise. So maybe what I'm about to say is like... Sounds but, good. <laughs> no, as in maybe it's like not relevant because we're looking for solutions. But don't you think there's something super intuitive also about an idea that it's just like... In the end, kind of like there is a part of you, I think, that kind of knows if it has a, like a, a substance and then also sometimes just sitting with it, maybe even for like five months, obviously, which you don't always have, but can be such a test because if it stays, you know, like if it stays, if this thing, because then you're going to live with it five years, like, okay, it depends if it's a feature film and you're writing and directing, it's a bit specific context as opposed to like co-writing in a series but if you know that you have to live with this thing for so long I always think just like hold it and test it in yourself for a few months you know and just backward for a last like playing with it when it comes but just see if you're still interested in, it in a few months you know that, that's very interesting uh, and it uh, resonates with the, the process of innovation uh, uh, engineers are, are taught. The aim is to fail quickly and uh, in cheap way. Mm -hmm. uh, it means that you have to try it quickly, your idea. You have to try it in, it could be with, by uh, making a sort of a cheap prototype of the idea. Mm -hmm. It could be a drawing, it could be uh, uh, something with paper, it could be a rough uh, treatment or, or uh, outline. You have to try it quickly to test it. And in particular, if you have uh, four or five, six ideas to... Uh, and um, this, this is uh, the mindset of designer. They are in action. They are, uh, it's, it's, they are not uh, focusing only on thinking, but doing. So they have to, to, to try their idea and what happens uh, in general is you you have this great idea, you, you write your scripts and you, you, you are so proud of it and you show it to someone and they said okay this is not what I was expecting, this is not what I asked for or this is what... So to avoid this kind of uh, frustration at the end of... Uh, is to, to, to try to prototype ideas quickly, to show them, to have feedback, to go back, to change, to adjust, and, and so on. So this is typically the process of innovation in, uh, in industries, or uh, uh, is to avoid uh, having the final, and this, for example, there are different type of culture. For example, here in France, where uh, there is a strong engineering culture, they are really good and they produce things that are uh, that work perfectly they come up with the product finished and sometimes the product is uh, accepted sometimes they get uh, rejected but the idea of design thinking is you have five steps um, 
which starts with empathy, uh, ideation, prototyping, uh, testing, and then we, 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 we do iterative okay. process. It's something that needs to be quick and just try it. Try it with friend, read your, uh, your scenes, read. This is the, the uh, because you know. In order not to lose years, right? in order to, to, to stop agonizing about the choice. Because, you know, you never know if it's the right idea, even if your intuition, and intuition sometimes could, can be wrong. You can have a, a, a right intuition, good intuition, and you are sure, but at the end of the day, maybe it's wrong. Because intuition, um, are, um, um, the, the process of intuition is I could be flawed sometimes. But the only things to, to do, if you have three, four, five ideas, try them. Try them quickly and fail in quick way and cheap way. Not at the end of, uh, you know, spending two years writing something. And um, when we write, we have different sizes of ideas. Uh, there, are an, uh, there is an idea like a pattern, uh, like a genre you write within, which is the global frame. And then you have smaller ideas that are useful for a scene. Just like when I said, maybe you can treat this uh, buddy movie, the two cops, for two minutes, they behave like a couple. This is a smaller idea. So you have to, uh, these ones you can try really fast because you can write a scene from a different angle with a different idea. And the idea is like the, the frame. So you have the big frame, the, the yeah. smaller ones, and you have to see if they, if they go together well. Uh, but intuition is true. Uh, we, we, we believe in intuition. We love it because it's comfortable. It's like a dream we have. But at the same time, to be new, an idea has to be not obvious. And, and often our intuitions are what we already like. Um, so to be really new, sometimes you have to go against your intuition and to, as you said, with uh, what was it, what was dialectical balances. balances. You have to go against yourself you, to test your idea. You have to, to try something against your idea to, to see what's resisting and what's new. Because uh, a good way to select an idea is uh, culture. Uh, uh, you have to, to know if somebody has already done it your way. If it's already done, do something else. Because uh, when we produce uh, works of art, nobody needs us, you know? So we're not needed. It's not like when you uh, give food to people, people are hungry. But when you are hungry for fiction, nobody needs your fiction. So you have to be really uh, new. Uh, uh, and this is a good criterion for selection. You are consistent. Uh, that depends what you expect from fiction. And sometimes uh, something very light too, uh, with a very light change. When we said, for example, that François Roustan said your position maybe, is better if you drop your hand. So a very small change can make a big difference in terms of perception. So yeah, of course, you don't need to be innovative absolutely to, to, to to destroy everything that's been done before, maybe you can just make a very slight move yeah. gives a different perception, like for wine tasting. But what I wanted to say is just, just newness as an obsession is also the sickness, of, I mean, the, mm. the sick part of our world, you know, looking for new and, you know, innovation. Novel children, innovation all the time. And sometimes we also lack consistency mm. more, more than innovation. So it's a mix. For me, the consistency is always a combined element. So I try to see the intuition of the idea, how, you know, what's the intuition of this idea, uh, the coherence of the idea in respect of the character, the story, and also the originality. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there, there are quite elements which combined together for me give the level of consistency. On, on just on the term of intuition, as you said, I think it's quite interesting to make a difference between, let's say, naive intuition and constructed, tested intuition. Absolutely. Which makes, I think, a big difference. And because and, and, naive uh, intuition can... It can be, yeah. You know, can produce not very interesting things or wrong things. But constructed and tested intuition is, has a much more how wide... You, how, how would you... Uh, well, again, yeah. my examples come from the scientific... Yeah, but uh, great. Well, well what's... What science about is about breaking naive intuition. I mean, the first, the first of them. I mean, the, the Earth is still in the center of the universe. How, how, how the Earth? How, how, how can it be possible that the Earth is moving on itself and rotating around the Sun, and we don't feel the, we don't feel that motion? That's the first, first of the first. But science is really about breaking naive intuition. You go beyond the obvious.
Yeah, I think that uh, what Natalie was talking about was expert intuition. I mean, uh, when you're used to tools after a few years of writing, your tools have become natural to you and you develop a professional intuition that maybe this idea looks good, but if you develop it, it's maybe for a short movie, not for a feature. And that comes out of experience. Mm. And also, you know, the subjective experience, like, uh, you know, which, like, for example, like Louise Bourgeois would always say that she would like, before making something, she would have this like ball of clay in her hand that she would like hold and hold and rub. And like, you know, and it's, and I think sometimes it's interesting to think of films in those terms because it is something that like you hold and you like, and sometimes it's not even turning it around on paper, but it's just in your mind. And if it stays with you and it's like, in the end, you have to like expel a story like it has to kind of come I think out of you and I, I don't know I just think there is a I, t I think there's a tiny fragment that kind of if it's something worth it you sort of know and if it's something that's kind of not you sort of don't but maybe you know that's like I don't know maybe it is naive but so it's strongly linked to motivation in a way the choice because in a way you can always improve an idea mm -hmm. you can improve working with John, working with a lot of things. But if you, m motivation is, is an inner criterion, uh, just yeah. like the idea. And to be honest with this motivation, sometimes it's difficult because yeah. you would like to do this because it will be better for the market. Or, I don't know, something like that. But truly, honestly, what you would be good at and, and what, where you can make a difference in it's in the other way. You can be good in that, so your motivation is there. And sometimes it's, it's, dif it's difficult to recognize that. Mm -hmm. Because you want, as a young writer, you want to, you know, to be efficient it, yeah. also. Uh, I, I was thinking about what you have said uh, uh, earlier uh, about values. If you, for example, to choose an idea, uh, considering your own values. And uh, uh, so one of the, um, the things that uh, could be interesting is, of course, go for your values, but add some constraint uh, to, to promote creativity. You, you choose the, the, the theme or the subject of your, uh, your film, uh, which is you know, in uh, uh, harmony with your value or another criteria, I don't know. And then you add the uh, constraint, I, I need to, uh, to, to get uh, fund for this thing. Uh, how can I present this in a way that doesn't betray my values? And uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's just, you know, because sometimes uh, uh, some people, they say, okay, so you, you are, uh, it's not uh, uh, a thesis, it's, it's a film, it's for, uh, for an audience. So uh, does it uh, fit the need of, of the audience? Uh, so this type of, uh, the, the, the processes of innovation, which start with empathy, Empathy is a, it's a toward yourself, why you want to, to tell this story, and also toward the audience, the, 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 the people you want to serve with your story. Uh, so the, this type of uh, empathy, I think, is very, very important. So it's also, it can be very liberating, maybe, to consider that you are talking to someone, which is the audience member, and that you want to have an impact, a certain kind of impact, that, and this impact represents yourself as a writer and it's not it's not only on your shoulder yes it's also the, on yeah. the shoulder of the audience member in a way and as for values i strongly believe that uh, the values you have as a human being have nothing to do with the ones you show in fiction which means that if you believe in humanity and i mean you are uh, francis ford coppola what are you going to show? Nice people? No. You're going to show somebody with conflicted values, for example, the Godfather. Uh, Michael believes in family, but is hateful of what his family is doing as a, as a mob and mafia, uh, everything like that. And why do you look at it? Because you see this conflicted guy making bad choices, immoral choices, get, get, uh, getting worse and worse. So the values you want to defend, maybe, in fiction, you have to go against them to, to make the humanity of the, of the viewer uh, conflicted with, with what he sees. And uh, so 
because uh, often when I read scripts, I see the values of the person writing. They are nice values, very good values, mm. and it's very boring. <laughs> yeah. So um, um, I think it's when you have I mean. great values by humanity, well, you're ready to, to write Breaking Bad. You have to show what, what being bad means, you know, and, and go for it. And uh, because fiction is here to show you what way you don't want to go in real life but you have to explore it in fiction so that you make a choice not to go there. You know, it's, a, it's like people in a shop, people who don't steal, you know? People who can't steal, they think they are honest, they are just cowards. <laughs> so if, if somebody is able to steal and he doesn't do it, then he's really honest. And it's the same thing for values. If you are, are not afraid of killing and you don't do it, it means you are really human, you know? And I believe that fiction is very par paradoxical. You have to, sh to see the bad things to be able of uh, raising the good ones. Uh, I think there's a very painful uh, issue for a writer, we, and we call it kill your darlings. Because Natalie was talking about intuition. Maybe you love a scene with your intuition, with your guts. You need it, and this is why you make the movie. And at the end of the writing, you understand that this scene that you started the movie with uh, can't stay and you have to kill your darlings and this is the most painful part of the rewriting process when you turn your back on the intuition the reason why you started writing and in the end maybe you can't keep the thing you love most in what you've done because you don't do it for yourself we are talking about selecting ideas um, in some works uh, you have too many ideas at the same time it's as if you go to a, a restaurant and you take a dish and there's too many ingredients, you know? Well, in a way you can say it's not a problem because uh, this was the first reaction to Mozart's work when the emperor says there are too many notes, you know? <laughs> so maybe if you do something new, it may sound like too many notes, but sometimes the economy is a good way. You have, you, even if you have two good ideas and you mix them, it's gonna be too much. So uh, it's like a, a flavor or, or a perfume. Sometimes you need to leave it alone, only one idea. Uh, it may be uh, enough. When I think about writing, when I was younger, I thought that was, um, what was needed was a profusion to be uh, rich and consistent. Um, and in the end, I took models from the Orient. Uh, so I believe in acupuncture. You don't need a lot of details. You just need the right details, the right detail at the right spot. And you, you put a needle in the imagination of your viewer and it's like circles. It's very rich, so don't put too much. Uh, don't put too many ideas. Just a little one at the right spot may have a great effect. Uh, so economy may be a, um, a good way. And as we are talking about food metaphors, ratatouille and wine and everything, uh, there's a concept of uh, chefs, um, Japanese chefs who do uh, ramen. You know, they only do ramen. They are a restaurant with just ramen. So you know what you're going to eat. It's going to be a bowl of soup with uh, noodles in it. But there are so many ways to do it. Um, but in the end, what you aim for is called umami. And umami is the feeling of satisfaction for um, the person eating. So you are talking about being consistent. And this is what you look for. You look for umami, which means all the layers, all the expectations are taken care of. There are many uh, ways, many ways to uh, make choice. Mm -hmm. Many, many ways. It's relatively unknown domain, scientifically, I think, because we, uh, uh, now we study uh, mainly the brain. We began to uh, study the guts, intelligence in the guts, and I wait for the moment where, where we will study the Hands. What is the gut intelligence? I don't know anything. Yes, we, we name that the third brain, uh, or the second brain. Uh, first brain is here, and uh, searchers uh, 20 years ago um, discovers uh, the complexity of the guts. And that you have neurons in the guts. Yes, a lot of neurons. Yes. Is that when you say, like, my gut feeling, yeah. that's where it comes from? Well, it, it, it relates to that, but the gut feelings was before science discovered there were, that there was neurons in the guts. 
That's so funny. Yeah. And, that uh, was the expression was used before. Of course, much much yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, it was discovered very recently. I mean, but very this, interesting. people doing so martial arts will always tell you it's about uh, the what you have yeah. in the gut. The but Greek. this is also intuition in a way. Yes, yes. I mean, it's this the, is this the thing. Yeah. Greeks yeah. yeah. thought the, Maybe it's something the soul else was in the stomach, no? But it's you remember that, it's and, uh, that re- thing, you know, that thing. No, but that it might be, it might be another uh, model of explanation that doesn't come from science, which, I mean, it's a possibility, I mean. Uh, in, in cognitive science, we, we call a gut feeling the feelings of intuition, and intuition is the cognitive processes of this uh, uh, feeling. So what happened in the brain in terms of, uh, but it's the same thing, it's just something that you feel, and we talk about gut feeling, and the intuition is uh, cognitive processes, which is, you know, a stimulus will trigger a memory. Something in the environment, internal or external, will trigger a memory, and you have this feeling, the gut feeling. That's uh, the way. Do we, do we have to listen to the gut feeling? Of course, there are biases in our perception and, uh, and stuff uh, that, that are very well studied and known. Uh, but this is uh, the uh, expert mode of making decisions. When you have an expert, when we have someone with a high level of expertise, this is how he deals with complex situations and with under uh, time pressure. So it's more a hunch than protocol. Yeah, mm. yeah. It, it's they, my they, turn. they. A hunch, it's uh, like an intuition. Um, but when you l- practice or, or read about martial arts literature, you will many times read that the good decisions are not made by the brain, yeah. but, but made by the concentration on the guts. Uh, and on the, the breathing. I, and I have to, I mean, I have to say personally, every, the, every time that I felt like I've made a good, especially actually you feel it more with the wrong ones, you know? <laughs> you really know it with the wrong ones when you felt something different, but then you didn't do it for whatever reason. And you yeah, know, kind of, and I think you have it in writing a lot, like that, yeah. you so know, because you also it's the laziness, uh, the hardest your, path, you know? Sometimes you don't want to take that hard path, you know? But you know, like, inside you that it's different. That's the problem of the place of, of emotion, of emotions in, in our society. Normally, I mean, the, the, the emotions are like, uh, you know, like water in our body for creativity, no? For instance, I mean, emotions are like uh, the, uh, the main substance of the creativity, but we are socially, I don't know, I mean, always you have to guide your emotion, not to listen to your emotion, your emotion disturbing you, your emotion disturb the family, your emotions disturb, disturbing the society. So we don't speak very much with our belly, by the way. Mm-hmm. So we are not uh, used to speak with our, you know, God brain. And that's a problem. There's something that we haven't talked about, uh, talking about how we select ideas. Um, And I think it it is, I mean, it's interesting to talk about that with somebody coming from the world of physics. Um, It's uh, the ability that uh, that that an idea has to generate electricity, physicality, and, uh, you know, conflict, mm. movement, mm. change. That's, that's some way. ideas, is, this is what screenwriters call, you know, having legs for, uh, some ideas, they run by themselves. So it really, cre- which is why we love to talk about, when we talk about the narrative part of a story, we call it the, 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 the engine, you know? It, there's a physicality in it, there's a, a, a puissance, power, you know? It's, uh, so it's, something that contains the fact that when this happens, you know that, my God, all the things that are gonna happen once that happens, you know? It's, it's a trigger, the, 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 the parameters put together trigger the fact that it will take such a struggle and such a, a movement and, and, and such a, a succession of, of uh, uh, of displacements and, and, and struggles in order to achieve a possible solution, you know? So you, you know that some ideas have that. And it's, it's as if uh, it was, I don't know, uh, 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 energetic potential in physics, you know? The, the, you feel that it's like the thing, the nature of the conflict implied by that idea 
is going to be like it's a nuclear plant, you know, in a way. It's like, Et Antoine, uh, the, the question is how to develop this um, expert intuition if we are to give maybe techniques or advices. And the one very simple thing is to read scripts uh, from movies or series you like and, and to read the different versions to see um, what choices were made. Uh, um, so you understand that what you like in the final product uh, has a history too. And if you can follow the development, then you can understand the choices that, what, that were made and you can develop your um, expert um, guts, intuition, by um, uh, reading, reading as many scripts as possible from uh, things that, that were well written. Don't you think that it was it was the same? It's a little bit the same that w what we already talked about in a way that like motivation and also the inner capacity of an idea to to be developed uh, is something that is all also linked to the technical aspect of narrative. Can I, can, I'm not sure it can be separated the two. So that's a question, but. Why, for, a, for instance, in a script, you are able to immediately keep the good idea and why not? That's, that's the, the question that you try to resolve. But it's not a formula. It's a kind of uh, read it, experience it, read it, write it, experience it, and stay close to your feeling about that. And try to see how does it work, and also ask how does it sound that for you? How does it sound? And how you use your eyes language, your sound of your voice, your attitude, all those elements are important in this connection. How does it sound for you? How do you feel in this idea? Where do you feel? Do you feel how, how do you feel and where do you feel this idea? I mean, a kind of really very specific and sensitive question that so, can give up an answer. So that would mean that uh, if the, the true sign that the idea is a good one is a somehow a physical sign, and not a conceptual sign. It's both. not the brain that has to analyze both. both. Yeah, the key element is that emotions can carry in, in, in stories. Emotions are the vehicle to carry ideas, to produce ideas ultimately. But if you don't have this physicality, uh, yeah. you know, it, it, you cannot have ideas first and then emotions. Uh, so the physicality comes first and the physicality creates the, the force which is going to be digging into reality and ultimately because of the results of these interactions in reality, physical interactions, it creates the possibility that vapors from these efforts, the vapors will generate meaning, which is ideas. But my point was to say that if this is one of the sign, what has to be practiced is a kind of discipline that helps you uh, uh, raffiné, uh, precise, the feelings you can uh, endorse as a living being, as, as a physical being. Absolutely. Um, how to develop that? Uh, there are many books available. You can take advice from, I don't know, from, for example, Sidney Lumet wrote an excellent book about uh, real examples, real situations, real ideas. And what appears is that a good idea, maybe no viewer will see it. For example, he, he talks about a movie that's about that's taking place um, at the beginning of night and uh, it's a journey into night and he talks about the choices he made for light and, um, the, and the choices of lenses he makes and nobody is aware of the idea and that was the right idea and he wrote the, the script and he thought about the direction uh, with an idea uh, which was there was a connection between the theme and the lenses and the way to shoot it. So sometimes the very good idea, no one will ever uh, see it, but it's like the spine of an organism.